Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Holy Happy Hour. I am your host, Josh, and at the end of this video, I got a huge announcement for you guys, something I've been working on for a while, and we are finally ready to launch this. We're going to be launching it. The link will be in the description if you can't wait for the surprise. You guys can check there. But I wanted to do today's or this week's episode on one of, I would like to say favorite. I want it to be one of my favorite sacraments, but um, one of the, the most important sacraments, which is confession. and I kind of grew up in a, in a not kind of, I did grow up in a Protestant um, household. I grew up where it, it was kind of one of these, Jesus died on the cross, so you're good. Jesus died on the cross, so your sins are forgiven. But there was never any kind of act we needed to do. It actually kind of put a perspective into life that it didn't really matter what I did, as long as I believed in Jesus and I tried to live a good life. This actually led me down roads of sexual impurity, thinking as long as my thoughts are in the good in a good place i think i'm going to marry this girl then it was okay that we engaged in sexual activities and this was such a dangerous way of thinking actually uh going through rcia this was rcia is what it was called at the time i think it's oca now going through that confession was my only maybe hang up it, it was the only thing that i learned about through the faith and it got me to a point where i was super uncomfortable, and I didn't quite understand it. And so going through and learning about this, this going into a box with uh, another person that even though there's a wall in between you or a curtain in between you, you know for a fact, like this priest knows who I am. They, they can hear my voice. They know, they know that I'm the one over here confessing these sins. And maybe it was something more grave, or maybe it was something embarrassing, embarrassed of, uh, engaging in uh, watching pornography or engaged in lying to my wife or whatever it was, something embarrassing that I was about to tell someone who knows my wife, who knows me, they know my voice, they know it's me, they're, they're, they are there, and this is now going to be super awkward. It was something I was, I was always hung up on. Until I talked to a, a few priests, I experienced confession, and it, it kind of changed my perspective on a few things. I saw a video one time that kind of put this into perspective. Um, it was a skit, and I can't remember who it was. I thought it was Tanner Kalina, who if you guys saw a few weeks back, I had him on the podcast. But it, it showed um, what was supposed to be a priest in confession, and he had his book. And I think it even showed him, like, nodding off, like no one is coming in confession. And all of a sudden, he hears the door, and he, like, pops up. And they start doing the sign of the cross, and then the, the guy just, like, he's all nervous. And then he gets up, and he just he leaves. He's, he's out of there. And then he, the guy comes back. I think it says two weeks later, one week later. He comes back, he sits down, and they do it again. They, he does the side of the cross, and he starts, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been. And then he gets up and he leaves. And he, he, he can't even get past the, how long it has been since his last confession. And then finally, it, fast forward through the whole thing, it, it gets finally to the point where it's like, it's been 15 years since my last confession. And it, and it shows the priest, and the priest is just like, Ugh. Like kind of this, are you kidding me? Feel. And then it cuts and says something to the fact, I'm probably explaining this terribly, but it cuts back and it says reality. And it shows that guy and it goes through the same thing again. Sign of the cross and he leaves. Sign of the cross, forgive me, Father. Uh, then he leaves because he can't say it. He's embarrassed. And then he goes back in there and he does the sign of the cross. It's been 15 years since my last confession. And the priest is just like, yes, yes, yes. And he's like, starts just tearing like crazy. And the, the person's just like, and it was so cool. It's such a great way to think of this as like a priest isn't there to force you to go to confession so that he can absolve you of your sins, force you to say what you did so that we know you're sorry. It's not one of these punishment type things. I think, I think so many people think of this as like a, you did something bad and it's time for you to own up to it, and it's time, which it is. But it's, but it's like people think of it as it's time for you to own up to it and we are going to make you do this, this penance, and you're going to feel bad about it and in this kind of judgmental, like you're a terrible person type feel, when in fact it's the exact opposite. I, I feel like the, the priest is the doctor in the situation, and he sees or he knows that there are sick people out there that, like spiritually sick, that need to come and be healed. And that's what they're there for. They're there to listen and to love you for where you are, and to be excited that you came, 
And I, I heard, a, heard a priest one time say, don't worry about me remembering your sins. I have much more better things to keep in my mind than your sins. And it, it was such a, a cool thing to think of that this guy that I know personally as a friend, that's also my priest at my parish, was just like, I, I wouldn't be able to, even if I was allowed to tell you what you confessed last time you were in confession, I would not even remember. Like, I'm there to hear the confessions. It is not my job to remember them. It is not my job to, to do anything. I'm just here in place of Christ to absolve you of your sins through this right that was given to me from Jesus himself. And so a lot of you guys probably sitting here thinking that confession, like, this is not biblical. It's not some, there's some Catholics made up. But honestly, there are, is a place in the Bible, and I challenge you to, like, contemplate this. I know most of you guys that watch this won't even uh, comment, won't even reach out, won't, which you can, but you don't have to. But I just challenge you to contemplate this, that in the Bible, when Jesus says, receive the Holy Spirit, those who send you forgive are forgiven, and those who re you retain are retained. What does that mean? Well, what is he meaning when he's giving this authority to his apostles? What does what that authority given mean to you? Because if it's just the first half, those who sins you forgive are forgiven, then yeah, you can interpret that to be him speaking to the apostles to then go out and tell everybody else. Those who sins you forgive are forgiven. So just encouraging people, forgive those around you. Forgive your brothers and sisters. But then he, he tags on that last half, though, that when I was a Protestant, could never be answered. And Protestants can't answer. Anytime someone comments, maybe hopefully people comment on this video to tell me the same thing. They'll just be like, you, you don't have to confess to a priest. You go straight to God. There's only one mediator, and it's Jesus. But what does that second half mean then? Those who sin to retain are retained. That is quite the authority to give to someone, quite a power to give to someone. Because what if, if, if the power is in all of us, not just priests? And I am a sinner, just like everybody, just like priests. I'm a sinner, and you have wronged me, but I'm, I have no intention on forgiving you. So I retain your sins. So by that same logic that this is just telling us to forgive people's sins, then I also could retain your sins. And if I retain your sins, where are you going when you die? So that, that Protestant view of that, you go straight to God with your confession. Which, by the way, Catholics don't not believe. It's just one of those, you can find out after when you die if those confessions that you did straight to God were in the, in the right state of mind, where the right, your heart was in the right place. Um, and you can find out then whether your sins are resolved, or you can go to someone who was given the authority to absolve your sins, and they can do it where you 100% know my sins have been forgiven by Jesus through the priest. We're not saying the priest can forgive our sins. The priest isn't forgiving our sins. The priest is doing this all through Jesus in, in persona Christe. And it's something that blew my mind when I was becoming Catholic. It was a little bit of a hang-up. I never had huge hang-ups. I never had huge hang-ups going through our say, but confession was the one. And the last thing I'll leave you with is another thing to contemplate with is if you are one of those people that are thinking, I would never go to a priest. For a confession. I would never go to a person for a confession because they're just sitting like me. The other thing I, I challenge you to contemplate with is is that truly a theological argument that you're thinking? Right? That you're truly thinking that no, I don't believe that's what the Bible is teaching. Because if so, you got to answer the previous question. Or is it a pride thing? For me, it was a pride thing. For me, the thought of going in front of someone who was my priest could remember if he wanted to he knew my voice maybe he's gonna like think of me differently maybe he's not gonna be able to look at me the same maybe he's going to judge me differently maybe this is gonna be something that I, I just I'm just not seen in the same eyes as him so he's not gonna pick me to volunteer for things he's not gonna pick me to help out around the church maybe I'm not gonna want to be a part of the church anymore because of how he's treating me but it was all my pride it was like maybe I'm gonna be seen like this I'm going to be affected this way and that was my biggest hang up it was a pride thing and i think when we can get with people even if it is a friend you, sh you shouldn't go to your friend for a confession but if you go to your friend and say hey can i tell you something i'm struggling with this i'm struggling with 
pornography is always a great one because that's such a hard one to admit. But I'm struggling with pornography. I'm struggling with lying to my friends, lying to my wife, lying to my kids, whatever it is, whatever that sin is that you're struggling with. Even if you can go to a friend and tell them, I'm struggling with this, can you help? The answer should always be to go to confession. But starting there, if you really are hung up on going to a priest, will hopefully at least get you in a, in a right mind of talking about it, which will make you more comfortable with going. So if you're one of those friends that you have someone coming to you saying, I'm really struggling with this, I encourage you to talk them through it and be there for them. But at the end of the day, always taking them back to the sacrament of confession because we have this healing gift, the a gift of healing that we can do as often as we want, as often as we need, I should say. And it's, it truly is that. It truly is a gift from God. Confession is such a beautiful thing. And one last story that, that's just beautiful to me is there was a family, uh, one of the guys that goes to our parish, and he said growing up, every month, the first Sunday of the month, we went to confession, then we went to Mass. And then for the rest of the month, it was just Mass, Mass, Mass. But then the first month came out, first Sunday of the month, and we were at confession and then Mass. And it became so regular that his brothers came down to visit and someone was walking by and like, oh, are your brothers in line for confession? And he's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it is the first Sunday of the month. And that's so cool to see that these young guys were instilled that confession is so important. It's such a gift. It's such a beautiful thing to be able to do, to be able to get that weight off your shoulders, to be able to truly open your, open your wound to Jesus, to allow him to heal it so that you can partake in eternity as well. When we choose not to come to Jesus, not to confess, not to open those wounds, he, he will respect our choice to not be healed. But we're also choosing to be away from Jesus. We're choosing to not accept these gifts from Jesus. And I always think that's a dangerous place. So I hope this um, helped you guys a little bit. The reason I wanted to do confession is because this week on Thursday at 9 a.m. it'll be premiering my episode with Father O'Brien, which will be the first of three first of three in our series um, of the sacraments. So we're going to be talking about the sacraments of healing, mainly confession, but we are going to touch a little bit on anointing of the sick. And then we're going to be going in with Father Vince Fernandez um, here in Tulsa um, on the sacraments of initiation. And then finally, uh, with Deacon Leffler, who I love this guy. He's a deacon at my parish. Um, very, very smart man. Very smart dude. And he's going to be going over the sacraments of service, talking about marriage and Oh, I'm running blank of the other one. Comment below if you remember the other one. So I'm super excited about that. But the big announcement is, you guys know we're partnered with Soccer Religious. Thank you, Soccer Religious, for sponsoring the show. You guys can use promo code HAPPY to check out at Soccer Religious. You know, Oktoberfest is coming up. And they got all the Oktoberfest gifts. Also, are doing specials on polos as well. The new polos, that kind of like loud shirts like this. The new polos um, all have Catholic patterns on them so that you can be a way for you to still dress nice for work, but possibly start faithful conversations. And so use promo code HAPPY for 10% off there, but it also supports the channel. But even better, Sacrilegious Catholic Concepts, I should say specifically, is doing all of our merchandise. So for the first time ever, our merchandise is now available in the link below. You guys can see it. It'll say the, the Holy Happy Hour doc checkout store, something like that. But you guys click that link and you guys go check out all the shirts, sweatshirts, tote bags, everything. We are working on some coffee mugs and stuff for our monthly supporters and I, i'm just super excited it is so cool to see that uh recently we've just passed a thousand subscribers i didn't get to announce it today because then we passed 1100 and it's just like growing faster than we can even keep up with so thank you guys for the support we look forward to continuing to grow with you uh check out the store we'd love to see you guys um repping that holy happy hour shirts tag us in social media everything and continue to engage with the channel because you guys know the more you guys comment like this video subscribe to the channel turn on the alert bell stuff like that you guys will never miss out on a video but it also helps push out this video to other people that maybe need to hear a video like this about confession and hear about this awesome gift of healing so well, i hope you guys have a great week this one is premiering on tuesday but in two days we'll be recording uh or posting our video with father o'brien from holy family the cathedral here in tulsa and we are just super excited to continue to grow in our faith with you as we start our first series on this sacrament. So you guys have a great week and God bless.